My name is David. I'm just a friend and a witness from Arbor Grove United Methodist Church in Perlier, North Carolina. Stay around with us for the next few minutes if you have time, and we'll read and talk about God's Word and how it affects you and me each day. I wish I could pour each one of you a good hot cup of coffee on this cold morning, but uh, uh, since that's not practical at the moment, I hope that you feel the warmth of the Holy Spirit as it pours out of the scriptures we're about to read. Now, our usual morning services at the Old Arbor have been suspended for the past few weeks as we battle this old coronavirus. But folks are getting better, and we hope to soon uh, resume at least our online services and on Facebook and YouTube uh, as quickly as possible. We also hope to get our uh, services up for live attendance as well. In the meantime, for all those that have prayed for us at the church and for each other as individuals, thank you a thousand times. Your prayers have been heard and obviously answered. But keep on praying because we have new sick folks every day that need your faith and need your help. I also wish to extend uh, another deep thanks for all those that have prayed for Ann and myself and our whole family while we were struggling with the virus. We're on the mend now, thank God and thanks to you, and we're back at work, so thank you so much. Today I'd like to share some scripture with you that concerns hope. I know of no other valuable commodity that's so sought after this day and time. You know, we constantly search for something to hope in and hope for. And we wake up each morning, each one of us desperately wanting to have hope in our lives and in the lives of our loved ones. And we struggle in the face of circumstances sometimes that seem to be bigger than we could possibly overcome. We desire hope. And that's exactly what Jesus brought us. When he told about the kingdom that was coming, the kingdom that he wanted and still wants all of us to be a part of, a kingdom that promises us eternal hope for eternal life with him. Our first scripture is aimed at those who are tired for whatever reason. You tired? I am. Uh, COVID will leave you that way, <laughs> but you can be tired if you're not even sick. Maybe you're simply tired from work. It's easy these days to overwork beyond our strength and health sometimes. You may be fighting COVID or some other disease. You may have been told that your disease is terminal, and you fought it bravely, but you're getting tired, and you're running low on something to hope for. Folks, Jesus sees you. He sees your situation, and he loves you, and he wants to provide you with a rest and a resting place. Somewhere to sit down and take a load off, as my grandpa used to say. I used to carry a brick for my grandpa, Bill Johnson, when I was a teenager, and we'd take a break every morning about 9.30 and get a cold drink, and I sure was glad to see that break time roll around. And if you're fighting a hectic work schedule, or if you're fighting health problems, money problems, or taking care of loved ones for whatever reason, you're probably yearning for that break time that seems to never come around often enough. I, I know you are. If only you could just lay that problem or those problems down for just a little while and get your breath. Jesus is so aware of you and those situations, and he promises that break time uh, is coming to you in Matthew 20, verses 28 through 30. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now you might ask, how can Jesus' yoke and burden be called light? He had the weight of the whole world and its sin on his shoulders. It's exactly for that reason that he gives you the light part of the load. You know, when I was a little young, my daddy would let me uh, help him when he was working on some project around the house. I was 
three or four years old. And uh, many times we <laughs> would be carrying a big board like a two by four or a two by six or a two by eight, big old board, 10, 12 foot long, you know. And I was only three or four and you can't carry much then. Uh, only as I got older did I realize that my daddy was carrying most, if not all, the weight. I was just holding on to the end of the, the piece of wood. He knew that I couldn't lift it, but he wanted me to learn how to do the work. And he shouldered that burden, the heavy part of the burden, and he taught me at the same time. Jesus wants to do that for you. Do you have problems? Sure you do. And some of them are too big for you to handle. Most of them probably are. Go to Jesus with them. Ask for his comfort, for his love, his healing. And not just of the body, but of your spirit. The one that fought the devil over sin and won is ready to and able to help you with the fight. Our second scripture today is aimed specifically at those that are so tired they're ready to quit they're ready to give up you ever been there you may be there now i don't know but this is particularly for those that think they're just hopeless with no way out of their problems we look at our situation today you can look around and you can get out of hope our country is divided with itself politically the streets are full of chaos in many cities disease is spreading faster than we can contain it and distrust of everyone from our elected officials down to the health experts and even our neighbors is all over the place and a desire for truth seems impossible to feel jesus is no stranger to these conditions it wasn't a bed of roses when he was here walking in the flesh. The three years that he walked on this earth were years of political tyranny. Men and women were arrested and sometimes tortured and killed simply for stating their belief in powers other than the Caesars that ruled Rome. Local religious leaders were corrupt and misguided and all the usual suspects of human lust, greed, and cruelty were present in his earthly life. But in the middle of these things, he preached of a kingdom to come when all these problems would be defeated and destroyed along with the sin that brought them. And he invited and still invites you and me to be a part of this group of survivors. He speaks of life beyond the body that we have now and we're not going to be here long folks the ones that lives the longest ain't going to be here a long time and he gives us ways to treat each other here that show us just a small picture of how wonderful the next life will be but we must believe and hope to stay strong in our faith of those things to come and that starts with faith in him he said this in Matthew chapter 24 in verses 12 and 13. He talked about these times at the end. He said, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But this is the verse that I like the best. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Jesus knew what was coming in the centuries to follow his death and resurrection. He knew that many would fall away from the, <coughs> their faith <coughs> Excuse me. when times got hard. And he knew the strength that the people would not be up to the fight to survive, particularly spiritually. But think what you would have to hope for if not for him. This life is short and it's full of trouble more often than not. What if this was it? What if this was all we had? If you think you're in despair now, what if you didn't have Jesus? Maybe you don't. Who wants to live just on their own strength? I figured out a long time back that mine isn't enough for the fight each day. I can't defeat my own material problems, much less my spiritual ones. Satan's too strong for me. But thank God that Jesus came, and thank God that he brought hope for better times with him when he came. If you have accepted him in your life, then you know the feeling of real hope for the future. If you haven't, 
then respond when he draws you. You will know the feeling. God will draw you to Christ. And you'll know that time because you'll probably be at the end of your rope. <coughs> Excuse me. And you will desire to wake up with hope in something and someone bigger than your problems. And you'll be crying out for a rest. That's God drawing you to faith in Jesus Christ. He wants you to repent of your sin. Make a turnaround. Believe in Jesus as the only begotten Son of God and accept Him as your hope for life. He'll help you accomplish the rest and He'll give you rest. Aren't you ready for a break? I bet you are. Amen. Here's a little tune that we sang out of the hymn book at our church sometimes. Makes a good little folk song too. And the message <coughs> is the same. And I will apologize for coughing through it, but I won't sing to you today. <coughs> My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame Sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within. His covenant, His blood, supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, He then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand God bless you folks stay safe hope to see you next week